Okay, so let's turn, let's turn the energy up a little bit and acknowledge ourselves. I always, I always like to start out that way. All right, so we're going to start out today with um, <clears throat> a really cool lesson, the lesson that I went over yesterday that I, that I really want to go over with you so I can remember better also. And uh, within the Course in Miracles, and it's called All Things Are Lessons That God Would Have Me Learn. And if you're here for the first time or you're new to the Course in Miracles, every Sunday, whatever class I do, the way that I look at it is that anybody that shows up was sent. And anybody that's been in this class for any period of time knows that you never know who's going to show up. The, you know, and that's because according to the Course in Miracles, anybody that comes, whether they realize it or not, are, are, are being sent. And different people are sent different weeks. So I'd like to ask you to entertain the idea that it's not an accident that you're here, no matter what reason you're here or how you got here, even if someone threatened you. <laughs> and so you're here because the fr your friendship was at stake or something, you know what I'm saying? Because this is a very deep lesson, very powerful lesson. And uh, you remember, you don't have to believe the ideas, you don't have to welcome the ideas. Uh, some of the ideas are going to be hard to believe, some of the ideas are going to be hard to believe, some of the ideas are going to be hard to believe, and some of the ideas are going to be startling. Uh, you're not asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. If you use the ideas, you will see that the ideas work. It's through the, and the Course in Miracles, and a miracle is not what people traditionally think of it as being, according to the Course. A miracle is a true perception. It's a correct perception. And I often say this, the Course in Miracles teaches that if we have a correct perception, it's a freaking miracle. So it's called Course in Miracles because we really can get attached to our way of seeing things. And the Course in Miracles are saying it's a miracle when people really change their mind. They really change their perception. And to change your perception means that you're willing to change your interpretation of what's going on. So when you say, I want to change my perception, you're saying, I want to change my interpretation of what's going on. And that's the same as saying, I want to change the meaning that I'm giving to what's going on. So changing your perception is changing your interpretation, which is changing the meanings that you give. So you haven't changed your mind if you walk out of the room or you study something and it gives you a new way to look at things, and then you walk out of the room and you use the same person. My mama is the problem. My boss is the problem. The world is the problem. A, a political party is the If you walk out and you use those exact same interpretations, you have not changed your mind. And so your mind will tell you the course doesn't work or whatever the spiritual path is you're studying doesn't work. The truth is you're not using the new meaning. With, are you with me on this? Because people get frustrated when they study stuff like this. It doesn't mean anything if I can quote the Course in Miracles to you and then something comes up in my life and I use the same interpretation that everybody else uses. You can't do that and get a different experience. And what's so beautiful about the truth is your belief and understanding isn't necessary at first at all. That's really great. You know, y'all say it again. Your understanding is not the issue. Your understanding what I'm saying is not what you're here for. <laughs> okay? That's not why you're here. Your showing up, your willingness to join, your willingness to open your mind to another way of looking at things, that's basically the main thing that's required. And so if you're sitting up here and you have an open mind, then you're basically doing everything that was opened up. So how do I get an open mind? He says, well, by telling yourself what you know may not be all there is to know. That there might, I mean, I'm, I'm stretching with this. 
But there might be something you don't know. I, I know. I know it's deep to say that to you, and I'm a little frightening, but it's frightening. But there's a part of us that thinks it knows, and then it tries to fit everything it hears into what you think you already know. So the temptation is to sit up and listen to me, but you really are just looking to see if I'll verify the way you already see things. And, so, and when I don't validate the way you see things, then the mind goes, that's not true. As if you are the arbiter of everything that's true, or I'm the arbiter of everything that's true. This is a deep lesson. It's called All Things Are Lessons the Creator Would Have Me Learn. And it's, on, it's Lesson 193 in the workbook of The Course of Miracles. Those of you online, welcome. It's great to be talking to you and to have you in my life also. And th my goal today is to walk out with something very practical that you can use as soon as you leave out of here that can make a difference. I'm not inter interested in abstractions. Today I'm interested more than ever in the practicality. So I'm going to jump around in this section. And I'm going to start by saying that, uh, so let me ask you a question. How many of you, how many of you think you believe there is a higher power? <laughs> yeah, that's, that was really solid, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. And then, okay, and how many of you want to believe there's a greater intelligence and power? Okay, now the reason why I'm asking you this is that one of the things that happens a lot in spiritual classes is that people come to a spiritual class but don't want you to talk about God. Don't you see that that's kind of crazy? Can I say that to you one more time? People come to spiritual classes and don't want me to mention God. That's crazy. All right? What they don't want me to mention is the God they have learned. Right. That's, what, that's where the resistance is coming from. It's coming from your idea of God. Now, how can I tell if I'm just kidding when I say I believe in a greater power? And how can I tell if I really mean it? This is what the Course in Miracles teaches. It's the degree upon which you are afraid and how much you are dependent on yourself. That's it. If you say you believe in a higher power that's completely loving, that's there connected to you, and yet you tell me you're worried about your bills, you're worried about your love life, you're worried about your job, you're worried about your health, you're mad at something, you're mad at somebody, you don't feel good about yourself, then you're BSing yourself when you say, I believe in God. Now, based on what I just said, I got some work to do. <laughs> In, am I alone? Okay, so the, one of the challenges with the Course in Miracles is that it gets you completely out of denial. Because it's easy to say, I love everybody, right? But then somebody walk in the door that you think you don't like, and then you're upset. Well, then you don't love everybody. So we need to stop saying this stuff. That we know we don't mean when we say it. I love everybody. Please. No. And the world will show you that you don't. So I want to go for the real deal. And so I'm going to tell the truth. And so the Course in Miracles says that what your are in the first paragraph, it says that. And, and, and I'm going to speak it in plain language because I don't really feel like dealing with people freaking out on the terminology. All right? So I'm just going to, you know, I've done this 35 years, trust me. All right? <laughs> that show you I'm either devoted or the slowest learner in the history of, the, of mankind. <laughs> my, my relative said, are you still reading that book? <laughs> And the little yellow God bus. I'm picking it up every day. And they take me. <laughs> I always want to ask people do you breathe once for the day? Do you eat once and you say, I need no more meals? Then why the heck would a person be thinking it about the truth? That you could just hear this one time and that's all I need and I got it. It's crap. You have to constantly remind, especially in this world, 
when you're not hearing it. So the idea that I can say a truth one time and think that it's going to sustain me for the rest of my life, that's also BS. So what we are aspiring to is to be as excited about the truth as everyone's been about the World Cup. <laughs> now, if we can pull that off, we are as good as enlightened. That's my highest goal, is that one day my classes and the truth will be as exciting to us as a Broncos game. <laughs> you know? That's when you know you're getting it. When you're as excited about your self-realization and your relationship with God as you are about scandal. <laughs> and you gotta go some to get as excited about God as scandal. I watch scandal. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of reminds me of my life. <laughs> so, so the Course says that, let's get straight about one thing. Your Creator, in the first paragraph it says, your Creator wills that the happiness that you inherited of your Creator be undisturbed. So, so that which created us, according to the Course, which we don't have to believe, God wills that your happiness be completely undisturbed eternal, which means your happiness never ends, your happiness forever grows, gaining in scope, that it eternally expands in the joy of full creation, that your happiness is eternally open and totally limitless. That's what that, thank you God, I, I would hope that would be good news. I, it's a radical stretch, but I would hope that would be something that somebody, why, does, why don't I get Tim talk, to, I got a split mantle. Why don't you get excited about that? Well, the reason why I don't get excited about that because I can't figure out how it's going to happen. Yeah. See, it's all really about me. You, I got, when you tell me something but I can't figure out how it's going to happen, then I can't really get that excited about it because we know I'm in charge of this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I make up my plan. I figure out what's best for me. I come up with the way to do it. I assign roles to all my friends and relatives. <laughs> And then I use guilt to coerce them to do it. And then I ask God what to do. I make up my mind, and then I ask for guidance. I decide what's going to make me happy. I decide who is going to make me happy. Then I ask Spirit, to, well, how do I get them? So God's job is to carry out my orders. Hello? Y'all hear me? And so the Course of Miracles says, if you're going to really become happy as you say you want to be, the first thing you got to get is that the universe really wants your happiness to be forever and undisturbed always. So you got to get that your Creator is not punishing you, not denying you, doesn't want you to go through the suffering and changes that you sometimes go through. So we have to make, we have to accept the idea at some level that the universe is good. Period. I don't care what's going on in Syria. I don't care what's going on in Lodo, <laughs> which is sometimes deeper than Syria. <laughs> Paying the whole time of night you're down. Yeah. Right? So then the course goes down further. I want you to jump to the paragraph that says, these are the lessons that God would have you learn. So, so the course is saying, I would have you learn the lessons that allow you to have a happiness that never ends. And then it says, these are the lessons your Creator would have you learn. Your Creator's will reflects all of them, and they reflect your Creator's loving kindness to you that your Creator loves. So I have to be, okay, so love, my Creator, when it gives me a lesson, the lesson will always reflect loving kindness to me. So the lessons that come from love, the lessons that come from my Creator, I have to decide that it's not a lesson that doesn't reflect loving kindness to me, okay? And it goes on and says, each lesson has a central thought and it's gonna be the same lesson in every form that you experience. And it says the form alone is changed. So, so you're gonna learn this lesson that I'm going to describe to you and the only thing that's different about it is that the appearance of the lesson will change with different circumstances and events, with different characters and different things, 
that are apparent but not real. In other words, they are the same in the fundamental content. And the fundamental content of all of the one lesson that you're going through in different circumstances, different events, with different characters, with different themes, the fundamental lesson is this. Forgive, and you will see this differently. Everything that's upsetting you, no matter what form it's taking, no matter what, I love the word characters, that are involved, the circumstances, the events, it all has one lesson from spirit, which is forgive, and you will see this differently. So the problem I'm having with my mom, forgive, is the, and you will see this differently, is the lesson. Whatever I think my health issue is, if I forgive, I will see it differently. But the trick is the word forgive. You know, if I tell people, people ask me what, I'm, what, what do I do for a living sometimes. Well, what do you do in the world? Well, if I say I teach a course in miracles, that's usually a turnoff. Or even more of a turnoff is, is, is if I say I teach classes on forgiveness. <laughs> Nobody ever responds to that. I get to say, oh, wonderful. Right? But if I say what forgiveness is, they always respond in a positive way. I say, well, I teach classes on releasing anger, guilt, grievances, and the past. They go, oh, I need that. <laughs> Almost every time they say, oh, I need that. If I say forgive, they never respond. Yeah. But if I say I teach lessons on letting go of anger, guilt, and grievances, they say I need that. Because forgiveness is not what the average person wants to do. Because they look at it as letting someone off the hook. Mm -hmm. You've done something yeah. bad to me and I'm just supposed to be okay about it? Mm -hmm. You hurt me and I'm just supposed to just let you just get away with that? But if I say it's about you letting go of the blocks, they want to hear it. So the Course in Miracles says forgive, which means if you correctly perceive. He says forgiveness is true perception. If I correctly perceive, the Course in Miracles says, that's what forgiveness means. It doesn't mean overlooking what you think someone did to you. It means I want to see correctly about what's happening so that I can get back to a peaceful, loving space. So when I say I want to forgive you, I'm not, I'm not spending any time trying to overlook what appeared to be the actions of my father who had a call for love that appeared to take the appearance of him having an alcohol problem that made him appear to be abusive to my mother. I'm not in this class to learn how to over, overlook that in a sense or forgive that. What I want is a way to look at that that would allow me to maintain a peaceful, loving place in myself. That's forgiveness. Now, did y'all like that definition more? Yes. Okay, that's how you can always tell when you've heard something that's true. By the way you feel. If it makes you go, ah, you feel a little bit lighter, then the Course teaches you, it's like the lightness is what's letting you know that you have a perception that's more in line with the truth because now you feel more peaceful. If I say something to you and you go, you know, your butt get tight, like that. You know, your little, your little muscle go, pew. Then you know. <laughs> but sometimes I see it like, <laughs> depending on what I'm saying, what I'm teaching. Some people <laughs> even have a little sound effect. <laughs> when that happens, I know that they didn't hear what I said correctly. I know they gave their meaning to what they think they heard me say. Okay, I'll say that again. When I say, when you read something in a spiritual book. It doesn't have to just be the course. And all of a sudden, you go, Ugh! what you just responded to was your meaning, hmm. not the meaning on the book, in the book. Because the book only talks lovingly. There's no condemnation in this. There's no sacrifice in this. There's not asking you to do one single thing that you can't do right now in this. So if you react with resistance, if I say Christ, <laughs> <laughs> you are responding to your childhood. That's what you're responding to. You're not responding to what I'm saying. Ooh, it should use, I think you got that masculine terminology for. You're responding to the meaning that you're giving. The book it says, self says, it has nothing to do with gender. 
That's you making that do that. You see, you follow what I'm saying? So the Course is trying to teach us when you react with anger or upset or lack of peace, it only means your meaning is the one you're using. That's it. If you respond to me in any way but love, you're wrong. That's it. If I, was, if I come in here and I respond to you with, in any other way other than love, I'm not seeing you correctly. That's different, isn't it? That's why you don't have to believe it. Because if you believe you have to believe it, it'd be difficult to practice it at first. So can you do stuff and say stuff you don't believe? Have you ever done it? Yes. So this is easy, isn't it? Because I want you to say things to yourself that you don't believe yet. Can you do that? Yes. Okay, so we we got lots of experience in that too, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So this is easy. T tell me you love me. Love you. See, you don't even have to believe it, but you can see. <laughs> now I'm gonna try to get my ex-wife in here. <laughs> see if I can't get her to say that to me. Bless her heart. <laughs> She was just awesome being, awesome being. She just happened to be married to me when I was completely unconscious and thought I wasn't. Hello? The more you learn the truth, the more you recognize, hmm, I'm the one <laughs> who was behind what was happening to me. Whoa. So it's this message, forgive and you will see this differently. Okay, now I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to say that. I repeat things so that we can get them into our body because memories are stored in your body. Do you know that your memories are stored in your body? Your memories are stored in your body. 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 You got tons of memories stored in your butt. <laughs> your whole childhood is stored in your ass. That's why you sit on that. Your arm. Your ears, your body is a memory. Do you know your body is a memory? That's deep. Do you know that? So you want to put some feeling in what you do so that you can make new memories. That's why when you're with somebody and you had a damn good time and you're enjoying yourself and it's a lot of love and you think about that person, you feel good. Why? Because they gave you a physical sensation of joy. You were with them and you felt good. Do you know that? People who think differently from you don't think anything like you. They will treat you so good if they like you. So someone intellectually coming from where you're coming from is not as important for peace with the person as them having wonderful feelings about you. So it is not about whether or not your friends and relatives intellectually understand or believe. It's about love, appreciation, joy, happiness. That's what it's about. I like you. I'll look out for you. You may not believe anything I believe, but because we like each other, we are not going to attack each other. It's the love that makes the difference not the intellectual necessarily an agreement. Are you with me on this? Yes. But if you say to that person, I want you to be my partner, my lover, my mate, then if you really want to enjoy that experience, you need to have a common state of mind. You need to have a language you're both covering. You need to be able to share your belief system with each other. Yes. I, I, please pay attention to the distinction I just made. If you're going to be in that person's inner circle and they're going to be in yours, you need to have a common purpose and a common state of mind. Yes. If they're not, it's just good for you to love each other, like each other. 
Why? Because if you're not special to me, if you're not special to me, I free you. I don't have as many demands and expectations of you. And so if I'm in a relationship with you, then I need to understand what forgiveness means. So here we go. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. see this differently. Correctly perceive and you will see this differently. Forgive and you will see this differently. Correctly perceive and you will see this differently. That's what forgiveness is. So when you walk out today, if you could possibly entertain in your mind that when you hear the word forgiveness, I'm not talking about overlooking what you think somebody did to you, and I'm talking about correct perception. If I see this correctly, I will see differently. And it says, certain it is that all distress doesn't appear to be nothing but unforgiveness. I know it doesn't look like your distress is nothing but unforgiveness. I know it doesn't look like the problem that you're going through doesn't seem like it's unforgiveness. I know the thing that you think is bothering you, keeping you from being happy, that you don't think it's just a form of unforgiveness on your part. But the Course of Miracles says that's the content underneath every form of distress that you're going through. I don't care what kind of distress that you're going through right now, about anything you're going through, any kind of distress about right now, the course is saying it's a form of unforgiveness. So what does that mean? It's a form of me not seeing something correctly. So I can't be miserable and right. I can't be miserable and right. I can't be unhappy and right. Now you see where it says you need not believe the ideas, you need not welcome the ideas. Because when is it that the average person most feels like they're right? When they're upset. When you're upset is when you think, and so the person that you're most upset about is actually the person you're most wrong about. Whoa. The, the person that, you, that, is, that the Course says, the target for your grievances. I love that. The target. He says, that's, and my ego goes, no! Does your ego do that too? Let's do it together. <laughs> Yet, he says, that's the freaking content underneath the form. It's the sameness. What do you mean it's the sameness? That it's all unforgiveness, which makes learning sure, because the lesson is so simple that the lesson cannot be rejected 
in the end. No one can hide forever from a truth so very obvious that this truth, what truth? That everything I'm going through is just a form of unforgiveness, appears in countless forms, yet it's recognized as easily in all of the forms. If one but wants to see the simple lesson there. So if I want to see the simple lesson that all of my distress is nothing but my own incorrect perceptions and meanings that I'm giving to a situation, then he says, I'll see the simple lesson. But if I don't want to own that maybe it's my way of seeing things that's causing the problem, it won't seem like a simple lesson. And so the lesson to keep coming to me through different people, different situations, and different circumstances until I finally go, it's the same lesson. <laughs> How do I know that? Because I'm the one common denominator <laughs> in every situation that I'm in. So if you want to grow spiritually beyond your wildest imagination today, then you would start to own responsibility for your feelings about whatever you're upset about right now. Woo! And stop saying if somebody else is bringing fault, and if somebody else changed, you would be happy. Yeah. Oh, that was thrilling. <laughs> that was a thrilling thing for the group. That's why God, I will probably never teach millions in front of my face. I, I got thousands on the internet because they don't have to be right here. <laughs> they got a nice little distance between me and them. They can do that. So, why were you sent today? You got some freaking forgiveness to do. <laughs> no! I'm nice, black man. What are you talking about? I love everybody. I'm so nice, I wouldn't kill nobody unless they mess with me first. <laughs> right? I'm just nice as I can be till you cross me. And that's what the course is saying. They wouldn't be crossing you if you didn't have a grievance. So... So what is God going to tell me in this tribulation? What is the Creator going to say to me in my tribulation? He says, well, forgive and you will see this differently. These are the words that the Holy Spirit speaks to you in all tribulations. What words? Forgive and you will see this differently. These are, the, these are the words that your higher self is going to speak to you in all your pain. What? If I forgive, I will see this differently. In all suffering, regardless of this form, even a toothache, all suffering, all suffering, all suffering. Does all suffering mean every suffering? Does every suffering mean any suffering? So is that all inclusive? Does all mean all? Does all mean everything? Even what you think you're unhappy about? Is that included in all? Okay, then the Course says, well, your higher self is going to say, Oh, I'm so unhappy. I can tell you what I'm part of the king to be the And then you're like, and your higher self goes, Begin. <laughs> and you will see this difference. Go to hell, God! <laughs> <laughs> These are the words with which temptation ends. And guilt abandoned is revered no more. These are the words. What words? Let's put it in for I. Forgive and what? I will see this differently. And what does that mean? If I correctly perceive, I will see this differently. Because if I am seeing it differently, it means I am seeing it differently. That's deep, isn't it? And then it says, Shall we not say these words when we are tempted to believe that pain is real and that death becomes our choice instead of life? What should I say? I will forgive and I will see this differently. Shall we not say these words when we have understood their power to release all minds from bondage? What words? I forgive and I will see this differently. These are the words, these are the words, these are the words, these are the words which give you power over all events. Did I say all events? All events. Does all events mean all events? Mm -hmm. Says these are the words which give who power? Me. Over what? All. That seem to have been given what? Power over you. 
So in the event that looked like, oh, I'm a victim of the economy. Oh, I can never have a relationship. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we're, so, we're so dramatic. Are we dramatic? We're a trip angle. You know. And have you noticed that each upset always seems like it's the big one? Yeah. You know, I don't care how many you have, I don't care how many you go through, I don't care how many, you know what I'm saying? No matter what you go through, you like, like Fred Sample used to say, this is the big one, this is the big one. That's us, you know. And then your friends know, honey, you have saying this to me so many freaking times. Just change, it's a different name. Right. It's the same, you had the same issue you had with him and him, because your friend's been watching you for years. <laughs> and so we are so good at seeing someone else's pattern, yeah. right? So if you really trusted your friends, now listen to me now, <laughs> if you really trusted your friends, you could save yourself a lot of pain because they see your pattern. They see that you're saying the same thing about this job, that you said about the other job, that you said about the other job, that you said about, they, know, they hear you saying the same thing about this partner, that you said about the other partner, which is always some variation of the theme. If this were different, I would be saved. If this were different, if they were different. And so what I'm doing for everyone that's close to me is, I will say this to you, with all sincerity, I ain't changing. <laughs> okay, just forget it. If you got any sort of, any kind of desire to change me in order for you to be happy, <laughs> notice you're not saying change me so I can be happier. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to change me so you can be happy. <laughs> it's something about me that's not making you happy. <laughs> so that means you're not really caring about me. You just really wanting your own fantasy in uninterrupted bliss. Mm -hmm. So don't be talking about I'm selfish when the only thing you want to change is me for your happiness, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> so damn. Yeah. 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 And, you, and so those of you who say, people say, well, you will never change, say yes. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I will never change. What do you mean I won't change? I'm going to always be loving. I'm going to always be loved. I'm going to always be loved by God. I'm going to always be powerful. I'm going to always be the one that's creating my reality. I'm always going to be the one that's not a victim of anything around me. You're right. I am not going to change. Who I really am it will never change. Now, what I am not will constantly change. So the only thing that's changing in any of us is what's not us. So if you're going to change, change in the direction of what you really are. Mm -hmm. See, the end result is that you are the loving, you are loving and you're lovable and you're cool and you're awesome. And all your changes are changes that are moving you toward that perception of yourself and away from any perception of yourself that's not that. Now that's good change. Mm -hmm. Got that? Yes. Yeah. All right, so it seemed to us that, <clears throat> I'll say this one more time. That's why I don't care how far I get. It says, these are the words which give you power over all events that seem to have power over you. Mm -hmm. It says, you will see all these events that seem to have power over you rightly when you hold these words in full awareness. <laughs> See, if I don't entertain myself, I fall asleep. So I got an advantage over y'all. Y'all just fall asleep. But I can entertain me. I'm good at entertaining me. That's scary how much I enjoy playing with myself. <laughs> People are not playing with yourself. <laughs> so, now those of you who feel embarrassed or uncomfortable, it's the meaning you're giving to it. 
You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? That was your own me. Ooh, I can't believe you said that. No, I just said playing with yourself. You the one that gave it to me. I heard that. You hear, you hear me? That's the way it is all the time. We do that all the time. And then we say, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know what they mean. You, we don't know what they mean. We know what we mean. Take a breath. I know. Let's give a really good yarn. So, <laughs> so don't forget these words apply to everything you see. Don't forget these words apply to everything you see. Don't forget that these words apply to everything you see. Or any brother looks upon a miss. So what does that mean? It means that forgive and you will see this differently applies to what you see incorrectly, but guess what? It also applies to everybody you know. So when you see your friends and your relatives upset, you can say, if they would correctly perceive, they would see this differently. If they were to forgive, they will see this differently. So that way you can use everybody to remember your one lesson. Not two lessons, not three lessons, not 40 lessons, not 50 lessons. One, every event, all circumstances, everything you go through on every level and everything that you go through every day, all day, is just one lesson that you are being taught by love. Correctly proceed, dude, and you will see or feel this differently. <sighs> Why would somebody want to study this? <sighs> That's why they don't. Because <laughs> that's too simple. I want to analyze my childhood. I want to analyze growing up a black man in America. That's the problem. See what I'm saying? You want to you wanna throw your story out to me. You want to give me your story. And if you give me your story, I'll use your story. You all could, could ask me anything that you want to ask me about anything you're going through, and I know the answer. Well, forgive, and you see that differently. Oh, forgive, and you be want to smack me upside my head. Oh, just forgive, and you say, oh, that problem, just forgive, and you, but you don't know what's happening. They're going to lay me off. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to pay. Forgive, dude. Look at it correctly. Ask God's guidance. Get on your spiritual path. Change your friggin' mind. Become more loving. Take some responsibility and it will change. No! Because it's so much easier to blame you. It's just easy. You know what I'm saying? I have to change me. I might have to do a workbook lesson. I might have to read. <laughs> It'd be much easier for me to just focus on you changing. <laughs> right? And don't we do that? Absolutely we do that. We always want to put it off on somebody else and say it's their responsibility because, because you want to guarantee you're not happy. Uh-huh. See, if I hate my freaking self, I'm going to keep on saying that. Oh, you. Oh, it's you. Oh, it's you. Well, then that keeps me in the same situation that I'm in right now, and I don't love me no way. You know, when I walk in the room, people don't just, oh, my God. Wow. The court says we hate our bodies when it doesn't give us the specialness that we want. And then we attack it and make it sick. Because we can't, our minds can't even attack because it's not physical. So your mind can't hit nothing because it's not physical. So I have to use my body to carry out my mind's attack wishes. Mm -hmm. But what if I look in the mirror and don't like me? I look in the mirror and I, and I do this. <laughs> <laughs> I hold my stomach again when I'm sitting in the freaking car by myself. What kind of, what kind of sense does that make? There's nobody even watching my stomach and I'm still <laughs> <laughs> it just gone relax, you know what I'm saying? But I see y'all coming in and go. <laughs> I've had pictures that I wanted retaken. Because I didn't like the angle. So the court says that's an attack upon your body. You're saying, body, I don't like you. 
And so I'm surprised when it gets a cold. I'm surprised when it has an allergy. I'm, a, I'm surprised when it's going through a million changes when I don't like the way I look myself. That's why I need you. Because you got to make me feel good about myself because I don't feel good about myself. You got to make me feel good about myself because I don't feel good about myself. You got to make me feel good about myself. And I'm looking for somebody to make me feel good about myself. And it's my latest desire for friendship and love. <laughs> I, saw, I saw you. I know. You know what I'm saying? It's too real. What I'm talking is too real, isn't it? You know, that's why I can, I can understand you all coming to one class and giving yourself a little time before you come back. <laughs> oh, tell me how to manifest a Cadillac. That's what I want to hear from you. I need, if you tell me, that's what I want to hear. I'm not coming here to hear I need it to change. What kind of class is this? This is a freaking cult. <laughs> this is a cult. <laughs> oh, I'm too lazy to want to have control over any of you. <laughs> That's the slow way. I want to move fast. If I want to control you, manipulate you, make you do anything you want to do, that means I got to take the time to do that. I could be moving ahead. I don't want to slow down by trying to control people. That's the slow way. I don't want to do the slow way anymore. So I'm going to bless you with all the freedom that God has already given you. Enlightened beings, you know why you don't ever hear nothing from them? Because they're smart enough to trust that God's in you and you will come to the realization of the truth for yourself in your own time with the guidance of your own greater self. Yes. So the more conscious you become, the more you trust that your brothers and sisters have God inside of them and they don't need you to personally try to fix them when you can't even give yourself a good day. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're the most depressed person in town saying you want to be with somebody. <laughs> cruel. You are cruel. <laughs> you want my phone number. You cruel. <laughs> you don't even know how to make yourself happy. You don't make me happy. You just want to join in the suffering. Oh. <laughs> you just want me to make you happy. <laughs> then maybe if it's a special relationship, maybe I'll just get blessed with your body. <laughs> you got a million hang-ups. I can't even enjoy that. <laughs> Hello? Quiet again. <laughs> <laughs> you're cruel. I don't love myself and I want to love you. How do I know that I'm cruel? I don't bless myself and I want to give myself to you. I like when it gets like this. You get a <laughs> drop in here. But the way you talking, dude, I'll never have anybody. <laughs> I'll be alone forever. That's the best for everyone. <laughs> People who are normally possessive and crazy and insecure and want to kill everybody that they love and watch them every minute, they're in houses and apartments. Mm -hmm. And they're watching each other. And they're making sure that they don't get out of each other's sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got two insane people yeah. keeping each other off the street yeah. for the good of all. <laughs> people make sure nobody else deals with them. <laughs> the polyamory. So, it always sounds like a car wax. But anyway. <laughs> I need the polyamory in my car. But that's it, but that's no different either. You know what polyamory is? Who knows what polyamory is? Who can tell me? What is it? That's a bunch of people at once. <laughs> a bunch of people that want so you, that sounds like an orgy. I'm talking about polyamory. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. I, no, it just, it, no, it just, it just means, polyamory means that there's going to be group specialists. That instead of me having a special relationship with one person, I'm going to have a special relationship with a lot of people, and that's what masochists do. 
insane. Yeah, it's a group now. Now instead of you having one insane relationship based on exclusion and no love that's being extended, you have a lot of people that you have these scripts and expectations and stuff with. So that's even can be even more challenging for if you're trying to do that with somebody who don't want to do it with you. What I'm talking about is neither polyamory nor monogamy. I'm talking about this. You are free. Woo! Period. <laughs> I want freedom for myself, but not for them. Mm -hmm. I want my own freedom, but I don't want your freedom. Right? So remember, I'm not talking about monogamy, I'm not talking about polyamory, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about as a child of God, as an infinite being, as an unlimited presence of love, you were created in freedom. And the reason why nothing rescues you is because you've never been imprisoned. That's, that's why there's no reason for God to free you, because you've never been imprisoned. It's you imprisoning you. So if you're imprisoning you, then you could reach outside the jail cell, get the key that's hanging up on the wall, put it inside the lock, and open the door and let yourself out. And what is the lock? What is the key? If I'll forgive, if I'll see this correctly, then I'll see this differently and I'll experience my life differently and I'll have the freedom that I want because freedom is of the mind. Freedom is of the mind. Freedom is of the mind. Freedom is of the mind, not of the body. Not of the body. Not of the body. The body can't be free. The body can't be free. The body can't be free. The body can't be free because the body is a form and therefore it's limited in what it can do. Your mind is unlimited. So freedom, like my like P Funk used to say back in the day, and pardon my French, free your mind and your ass will follow. It's impossible that your body not be where your mind intends. Your body is here because your mind intended to be here. Your body doesn't have a choice but to be in the environment that your consciousness creates. Change your consciousness and your body will be in a new environment and it will happen in a way that will blow your mind into synchronicity and before you know it, you're in a whole different reality that you're wondering how in the heck did it happen? It happened because you forgave. You chose to see things differently. You chose to take responsibility. You chose to stop seeing yourself as a victim of everything. You chose to see yourself as one. So don't ever think that I'm anti-relationship. I'm not anti-special relationship. I've heard that so many times since I've been teaching this freaking class to people who say, well, they look like you. You don't really believe in special relationships. I don't believe in pain and fear and craziness. We need each other. We can't possibly have physical relationships and personal relationships with everybody. So spirit will, the Course says, you will be assigned people. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we can't reach everybody physically. So you will be assigned people to practice this on. And that's the people in your life, especially the ones you think you love. They're your assignments. And I had assignments in school that I look forward to. As well as I had some assignments in school that I didn't look forward to at all. But the assignments were neutral. I just wasn't looking at it neutrally. So now you go, oh, I'm in this relationship. The purpose of this relationship is to show me I have constant happiness forever. I deserve constant happiness forever. They're here to let me know that if I forgive, if I'll see this differently. And the Course says, and this is the last thing that I'm going to cover right now, it says that laughter should replace every bit of trouble that you think you are going through can be replaced by laughter and by joy. Mm -hmm. That if you were to tell yourself, I love this one, I, to all that speaks of terror, to all that speaks of terror, to all that frightens you, it says, answer this way. I will forgive and this will disappear. I will forgive and this will dif disappear. I will forgive, what does that mean? I will correctly perceive and this will disappear. I will start seeing this through the eyes of God and truth and love and this problem, this fear, this anxiety, this situation will disappear. And if it's not disappearing, stop saying that you're doing it because you're not doing it. You can't practice the truth and not have it work. <clears throat> I'm glad to hear that. I'd rather say, hey Earl, you must not be doing it brother because you don't see a change than say God and the truth doesn't work. I'd rather say I might be misperceiving than to dismiss the infinite creator 
you know, you really got a problem if you just picture God. Now, God isn't a man or a woman, but but just picture you having a problem, and I'm God, and I go, oh man. That's where God looked at your problem. Oh man. Wow. <laughs> That's what we act like. We act like we can come up with some situation greater than God's ability to heal. That's so arrogant. You that bad? <laughs> you that guilty? You that pathetic that the infinite creation could not give you an answer? That's You're so special. <laughs> you are so special. Get rid of it. Tell yourself, there's no gain at all to me in this. There's no benefit to me in this suffering. There's no benefit to me in not letting myself be loved. There's no benefit to me through not having joy. And then watch the universe kick into motion, spirit kick into motion, and you begin to see the blessings and the people and the circumstances that have been making you so unhappy be used to bring you greater joy than you've ever experienced in your whole life because that's what I want for you because that's what you deserve. Would you give it up for you? Upset and you're feeling resistance and you're never going to come back. Don't! <laughs> and I love you. Because it's not important whether you come back or not, because I've got to learn how to be authentic, be myself, and let people come in and let people go out of my life. I've got to stop clinging to everybody who come into my life. Especially the ones who are misperceiving me, don't see me correctly, and think I'm a threat to them. I used to try to hang on to those jokers. I'd try to convince them to stick around me. I'd be running up to the person, don't you want to come back? What did I do wrong? What could I do to make you stay? It's like you should be going, zippity do, da, zippity yay. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yes. All right, so while you're in a good mood, let's do the love offering. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your financial expressions of appreciation because you know I'm trying to use you for your money because I'm going to be rich for what you give. He's <laughs> <laughs> in this for the money. <laughs> no, I'm in this for the, the correction and the love. And so those of you online, if you want to make a financial expression of appreciation, you can go to my website, earlpurdy.com. I got 800 classes on YouTube, and this class will be on YouTube. So I have a contact list up front that I'm not passing around because I feel like anybody that's really sincere about listening to this again and hearing it can walk 15 feet and put their name on it. So that is, so it's, I shouldn't have to like, it's available, I love you, I want to, you to use me, I want to be used, 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 I want to be used for love and peace and joy and happiness. So I'm giving all I've got as best I can give it to you. Because I want to give what I want to receive, I want to be what I want to have. If I want cool, loving people to be in my life, I got to be one myself. I'm through expecting people to treat me in ways I don't treat myself. I'm through with that. I'm tired. Aren't you tired? Yes. Aren't, aren't some of you all tired? Haven't yes. you reached your limit? Yes. yes. Are you ready to be happy more than you want to be right? Yes. yes. Mm. Give up that. You don't have to be right. And if you're satisfied with what you believe, and you're satisfied with your point of view, and you're satisfied with the way you're doing it, I support you following your guidance. If you listen to me say anything, anything, you put what your inner self says to you before anything you hear me say. You honor what you feel is right for you. And that doesn't sound like someone is trying to control you. They wouldn't be saying what I'm saying if they're trying to control you. So listen to me, compare it to what your heart says, go with what your heart says. You'll be the one that have to experience it anyway, but how will you ever learn to trust yourself if you don't? You know, so I'm on your side. I want what you want. We just have our own individual ways of achieving it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a minute or two before we go out, and, there, and, and I want, to get this one thought. So what is the one idea today that we can just run it down really quick? 
No matter what you think you're going through right now, no matter what you think you're unhappy about right now, no matter what you think you're going through right now, no matter what your unhappiness right now, if you will forgive, it will disappear. But I've been studying. I have been reading. I said my workbook lesson three times last week. Three times last week? <laughs> the whole week? And you're amazed that your whole experience has a shift <laughs> But, but the rest of the time you was telling yourself you were a victim, you were feeling grievances, you were complaining the rest of the time, and you were actually shocked that you, you never read, you never study, you never consistently work on yourself, you, you don't do any of those things, but you're shocked. I mean, just, just shocked that nothing's shifted yet. <laughs> I'm funny. Yeah, Are we hilarious? Yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Oh, oh, but I can. It's hard for me to laugh when my own stuff is happening. I can laugh at y'all. That's what it's going to happen. But when my own stuff going to it's serious business. And I can look at you and you can be going through anything. And I say, that's an illusion. You know you're creating it. Why did you create that? You know you're not a victim. You know what I'm saying? Then soon as something happens with you, where are you saying that about your stuff? It's quite difficult. It's difficult. And it's not going to work till you can say it about your stuff. Well, how do you get to the point that you can look at your stuff correctly? You see everybody else's correctly. They, they're your way to practice. The news is the way to practice. Your relatives and friends are the way you practice the truth. Because it's easier for you to look at them and say, oh, if they will forgive, <laughs> if they just forgive. Then he would be happy. <laughs> oh, if you would just forgive. You know, it's that give we can be with other people. I don't understand. What's your problem? You just forgive, honey. Then you'll see things differently. And then somebody take your pocket space. I want to kill them. I want to kill them. <laughs> we feel hilarious. We're hilarious. But can I land with my stuff? Eventually. Sooner than I used to. But, not, you know, so you're doing great. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Yeah. 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 And, and when you're serious about being changing, do you know the course teaches that you will be sent joyous lessons? That you don't have to learn through these painful lessons anymore, the ones you choose for love? You don't have to suffer anymore? You can get your lessons in a way to turn you on when you decide you don't need to suffer anymore? Wow, that's great news, isn't it? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah, we're making work for you with that love. All right, one minute. Take a breath. Uh... I couldn't be by myself. To stay. And let me tell you one more thing, brothers and sisters. You're not going to feel happy all the time on the way to feeling happy all the time. You're not going to feel happy all the time on the way to feeling happy all the time. You're not going to feel peace all the time on the way to feeling peace all the time. So if you want to feel peace all the time, you got to allow all your feelings, allow all your feelings, allow all your feelings, allow all your feelings. All your feelings. If you feel the way you feel, don't deny the way you feel. Be honest with yourself about the way you feel. If you feel angry, then tell yourself, I'm feeling angry, but tell yourself right after that, I'm giving that anger all the meaning that it has for me. Tell the truth, and then tell yourself the truth. Tell yourself, be honest about how you feel, and then tell yourself the truth about it. Say, I'm giving this all the meaning it has for me. I'm thankful. I am thankful that I have the ability to give everything the meaning that it has for me. I'm grateful that I'm not a victim of the world I see. And I thank my creator for its gifts to me. I thank God for God's gifts to me. And I am still as God created me. I'm still as love created me. I'm still as the universe created me. I know I made a mistake yesterday. I know I went off when I said I wasn't. I know I felt jealous. I know I got insecure. I know that I still feel depressed sometimes, but I am giving this all the meaning that it has for me, and I'm going to end by telling myself, I will forgive, and this will disappear. Join me, somebody. I will forgive, and this will disappear. What? I will forgive, and this will disappear. Woo! I will forgive, 
and this will disappear. What I will forgive, and this will disappear. Whatever the pain is, I will forgive, and this will disappear. Whatever the lack is, I will forgive, and this will disappear. So remember that simply means I will give this a new interpretation. I will see this differently. I will give this a new interpretation. I will look at this through the way my teachings teach me to look at it. I will look at this the way that the truth tells me to look at it. And this problem, this situation, this feeling will disappear. You are powerful. You are unlimited. You can have power over the events that seem to have power over you. You can have power over the events that seem to have power over you. Yes, you can. You can have power over events that seem to have power over you. That thing that seems to have power over you, you can have power over it. If you will tell yourself, if I forgive, this will disappear. I'll say, I will forgive and this will disappear. So don't tell yourself that the different problems, the different circumstances are really presenting you with different problems. It's just one underlying lesson behind everything that you're going through, Earl. No matter what you're feeling, no matter what you are experiencing, brother, you just have an unforgiveness at the root of that. You just have an unforgiveness, a wish to separate, a wish not to join that's causing that. You're not taking responsibility. That's why you're keeping it going. And responsibility is a blame. Don't blame yourself. We're not asking you to blame yourself. So you don't go, oh my God, I did it again. That's blaming yourself. Don't blame yourself. Just go, hmm, that's interesting. I did that again. Wow. Acknowledge yourself. I love you. Thank you. We have to be the member of the Holy Spirit. You are awesome. And hugs are available Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. One of the most awesome classes going is the Way of Mastery also. That's at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. I love you. Go online. I post all my classes. Go to the contact list. Sign up for my contact list online so you can receive links to the videos of all these classes so you can listen to them again. Give somebody a hug if you want to scare me to death before you leave. I appreciate y'all. Wow. Yeah. yeah.